Hi, welcome back to Burning River Bushcraft. Today I'm going to be doing a review on a modified hatchet by Beaver Creek Woodcraft. So Beaver Creek Woodcraft is a local company run by Matt Justice. And what he has done is taken a traditional carpenter hatchet, which is a hatchet on one side, hammer pull on the back with a nail puller, and did a modification made popular by Craig Roost. I believe Craig calls this the chicken hawk model. Uh, it's uh, undercut and what it does is lets me choke up on the bit a little bit more and it works a lot better for what I use a hatchet for. So I've had this particular hatchet for about a month trying it out. It's been to a couple different classes with me. I've used it to help process two deer as well as a turkey. So I've got quite a bit of use out of it and that's in addition to normal carving and fire building and stuff around the house. I am very familiar with this style because I've been using one very similar for probably about 15 years now. This is the unmodified carpenter's hatchet. You can see it's got the nail nick right here to pull nails with, which I do find a handy feature. Uh, same pole, same bit. I just found this at a flea market and put it on a long riggers handle. This handle, you know, it's got the normal contours. You can choke up, choke down, whatever. Uh, you can see the one that Matt did. It's very slender. He has like a pine tar finish he puts on it. You know, obviously, you know, one's more utilitarian. And when you dress it up and sharpen it and modify it, it works a little bit better for woodcraft and bushcraft. Now, my old hatchets lived a hard life. This was actually in a bucket with my trap stakes. I don't really uh, treat it all that nice. I dip the head in trap dye to keep the rust down. I just sharpen it quickly with a file to get me by. I'll bust out quick stakes and mostly just uh, hammer in stakes and make pocket holes and that kind of thing with this. So it's a utilitarian design anyway, but with this quick modification that Matt does, you know, it just makes it that much more versatile. So let's get over on a stump and I'll show you how well this thing cuts. So here's a better look at the hatchet. You can see, you know, the head's got a nice finish to it. It is razor sharp, like I'll show you in a minute. And, you know, the money's in the handle here. This is a very nice finish on this. I believe he uses like a pine tar finish. And it's a nice straight shaft. I wasn't quite so sure when I started using it, but since I have been using it, it allows me to go from a choke up to a midpoint to a full power swing. And really there's no change in the the handle. You know, this is my old beater here, and this is more of a variable grip. So it's got a couple pre-made places that your hand wants to fly to. Uh, I'm used to this. It's really not that big a deal to me, but the straight shaft is an improvement. So the edge on the old beater carpenter hatchet is, is pretty dull, actually. I just kind of hit it with a file. It's plenty for making stakes. Uh, making blocking for traps, anything like that. I don't have a mask for it, so it sits either in a bucket or in my pack basket and just kind of gets knocked around. That doesn't do anything at all to help the edge. The Once you get this sharpened and refined, you want to protect that edge. So that's the one thing Matt did do, is he includes a leather mask. And I do like this mask, it's kind of cool. You know, the fit and finish, it looks nice, but when you actually start to use the thing, uh, I carry mine on a, on a canvas loop. So when I draw it out to use it, the X is in my right hand, my left hand is right on the snap side. So it kind of makes it real convenient. You really don't pay attention to that kind of stuff until you start actually getting to use it. Another thing I like about it is I've got so many hatchets and axes, when you start swinging them, driving in tent stakes, you know, I've launched these all over the woods. Because of this heavy cut in the side, that lets, that lets this mask really stay into place. So it's really got some grip to hold on to. So I can do this all day, and that mask is never going to go anywhere. So that's cool for safety, but the main annoyance is you end up launching these things and losing them. But this is a good design, and this is an improvement. 
So one thing you got to remember when you start modifying a tool like this and removing metal is you're taking a lot of the weight away. So you're taking some of the power that the tool has. Now you can counteract that with a longer handle and this thing does a pretty good job but at this point it's actually more comparable to a tomahawk than a hammer or a hatchet or anything else that it originally was designed to be. So it's light, it's convenient to carry and you can still get pretty good power out of this but you definitely modified the tool and modified its intended purpose. So we're going to do a little cutting demo here. So this is a piece of cherry that I got along the wood line about three weeks ago. So it's kind of in that not really green, not really seasoned area. So of course you can swing it and chop with it, but it really excels at any type of carving. So this side is pretty much untouched. I'm going to go ahead and try to flatten it out. So I'm going to try some hewing with this. So that's a pretty flat side. So this would be, you know, if you're trying to thin a piece of stock down for a trap, uh, making a bow, something like that. So that's a pretty good, pretty good idea what it's got. Take some power cuts here. And basically just make this into a tent stake. So I've got a good point on it. Now the top, I'm just going to take a camphor. So I'm just going to kind of nick the edge. All right, so now that's crowned. So when I hit this, You know, it's got less of a tendency to split out. And I'm going to try to put a... Let me just limb this here. I'm going to put a 7 notch about an inch down. Okay, so here's a seven notch.
crown top and a point. So this would be like a huge, huge, huge uh, test thing. So here's a piece of wood that's been split out of the firewood pile here. So it carves okay. It carves as good as I'm able to actually. But this was uh, with a little bit of time with a detail knife and a spoon knife, I'm able to get a spoon out of this little thing. So the simplest way to describe this is just a tool. This is a very nice version of a tool. This is the kind of thing that uh, our grandparents and great grandparents had in every barn. It was used all the time with a few modern modifications. You're able to do a little bit more fun things with it, like carve, but this will do, you know, your one stick fires, this will split kindling. Uh, it will help you quarter large game. Uh, I was able to knock the wings off turkeys with this thing to make wing bone calls. Uh, it's a versatile tool, and if this is something that you might be interested in, uh, hook up with uh, Beaver Creek Woodcraft on Facebook. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, he does this modification. He'll do it on your head. Uh, send it to him. He has a few of these for sale from time to time. They go quickly. So this is something, uh, if you're interested in, hit him up. This has been Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. See you next time.